Oh, y'all want to break the commandments? Your sons and daughters are going to be given to another people. Who is the other people that they were given to? Don't be scared. Say it again, dog brother. The white man. Your sons and daughters were given to the so-called white man. And he changed your name. He whipped your four parents. He raped your foremothers. He raped your forefathers. And he changed their names and said, You are from the Thompson Plantation. You are from the Chisholm Plantation. You are from the Baxter Plantation. You are from the Simon Plantation. And now we get together and we don't know who the hell we are. I just tell you, most of our people think we're African American. Let me say y'all something. When we say African American, essentially here's what we're saying. Who was Africanus? Or where's the name Africa come from? Do you know? What about the name America? Where does it come from? Do you know? Okay, so let's let's really break this down and see if we're African American. The name Africa comes from a man named Leo Scipio Africanus. He's a so-called white man. He conquered a black man named Hannibal during the Second Punic Wars. And just like they do in America, when they conquer something, when they take something under their control, they put their name on it. So now, the name, is, the name of the continent is called Africa. It's named after Africanus. Same thing here in America. America was not discovered by Columbus. It was discovered by a man named Amerigo Vespucci. Thus, you get the name America from the Spanish name Amerigo. So you have Africanus and Amerigo. For the English term, African American. Right. Two white men. So sister, do you come from two white men? No, you don't. I'm going to answer it for you. No ma'am, you don't come from two white men. Right. Because two white men can't produce life. Right. Read what you got. The book of Psalms chapter 49 verse 11. Their enemy thought is that their houses shall continue forever. This is your enemies. Remember, you're in your enemy's land. Your forefathers came in on slave ships. Their enemy thought is that everything that they've conquered, everything that they rule is going to last forever. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. They call their lands after their own names. That's written in the scriptures. So now, if they call their land after their names, and their land is called America, what do they call you? American. Right. But that ain't what God calls you. Bring it up. God says, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, so on and so forth. These are God's chosen people. You are God's chosen people. We're here to warn God's chosen people to keep the commandments, to keep the commandments, or you're gonna die when the missiles come. There are missiles coming to America. It's recorded in the Bible. It's recorded in the Bible. Just like it was prophesied that you were going to slavery. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. I'm going to show you. The prophecy is that you would go into slavery. Look on your flyers. Look on the front of your flyer. Look on that one. Not, that's the inside part. What other part at? Look on the front of it. Look on the front of the flyer, sisters. Sisters, I want y'all to look at the front of your fly. I know that fool good. Look at the front of your fly. I'm going to show you something. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. I want you to listen. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God said he's going to bring the children of Israel again into Egypt with ships. Now, what is Egypt? What is the Bible talking about when it says Egypt? Remember, we're only using the words of God. God is going to explain to us what Egypt means. Read. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of what? Bondage. So Egypt is synonymous to what? Bondage. Slavery. Bondage. Slavery. The children of Israel were in slavery in Egypt. You know the story about Moses delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt? They were in slavery. Now God says, but this time, read 68 again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. But this time, you're going to go into slavery, into bondage on ships. Our forefathers came here on slave ships. So what happened when we got off the slave ships? What happened to us? 
we were put to work. What happened first? What happened, sisters? What happened first when we, when we were brought here on slave ships? What happened to us first? What's the first thing they did to us when we came on those slave ships? Bring it up. Huh? Shell. Do what? Shell us. Shell us. Think about it. Think about it. As soon as you got off the slave ships, you were sold to a plantation. And what happened on the plantation? You were beaten. Why were you beaten? No, more than that. Because they had to take and strip your name from you. You ever seen uh, Roots? You seen Roots? What, what happened to Toby when they got him to the plantation? What happened to Kuta? His name was Kuta. He kept saying Kuta. Kuta Kinte. So what did what did they do to Kunta? They beat him until he said the name that they gave him. That's why your last what's your last name? What's your last name? Sam. Sammons, right? Sam. Say it again. Sam. Samuels. Sam. Sammons. Sam. Watch this though. What's your last name? Are y'all cousins? Y'all brothers? What's your last name? Baxter. Baxter. Say your last name. Simon. Simon. Y'all brothers. Okay. Cousins. What's your last name? Baxter. What's your last name? Hills. Hold on now. Why are you showing the same people? Bring it out. Tell me why all you. What's your last name? Chisholm. Chisholm. What's your last name? Come on, sister. Tell me. Turn around. Tell me. What's your last name? You know why we all got these? Hey, sister, right here. What's your last name? Turner. Why do we all got these last names? Who's probably related to, uh, uh, I ain't gonna say, I was about to say Tim Turner, but you know. You know, <laughs> Nat Turner, Nat Turner. Why we got, why we got these last names? Because in slavery, your all of your forefathers came from a different plantation. Her foreparents came from the Turner plantation. Right. Your foreparents came from the Simon plantation. What was your last name? Baxter. Your forefathers came from the Baxter plantation. Right. What was your last name? Hill. Your forefather came from the Hill plantation. Your forefather came from the Chisholm plantation. That's why we got these last names. Because they beat your four parents until they accepted the name that they gave them. They stripped them of their nationality, took their language, took their customs, and gave you what they wanted you to have here in America. Now you celebrate your birthday, you celebrate Christmas, you celebrate Thanksgiving, you celebrate the 4th of July, and you celebrate the BS going on out here today, which is a Mayfest. You are breaking God's commandments because they taught you to break God's commandments. Now, you gotta repent. Your parents have to repent. All of these old brothers and sisters out here who know that they go to church every Sunday and they skip over every law in the Bible, right. they know they gotta repent. Right, right. Or you're going to reap the damnation that this place is promised to get. Do you wanna die? You wanna die? Or do you wanna repent? You wanna repent? Read that in Matthew 4, 7, 4 17 again. Yeah, learn something. I got a question. What's your nationality? Huh? Matthew. What's your last name? Matthew. Gillard. What it? Gillard. Gillard. What's yours? Thompson? Thompson. But y'all brothers, y'all should have the same last name. We should be Israel. That's supposed to be your all of y'all supposed to have the last name of an ear of Israel because you are the Israelites. Please. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 15 and you shall leave your name for a curse God says that you're gonna leave your name for a curse it's a curse for your last name to be Thompson Baxter Hill Chisholm and Simon that's a curse you know why because this happened right this is the curse that was promised to happen to us if we broke God's commandments this is the curse God said what we again and you shall leave your name for a curse uh -huh. unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. You are the servants of God, but now you don't go by the name that God gave you because we broke God's commandments and we had to be put in slavery. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Bring it up. You left your name for a curse. This is the curse that happened to you. Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. God says your sons and daughters, oh, Y'all want to break the commandments? Your sons and daughters are going to be given to another people. Who is the other people that they were given to? Don't be scared. Say it again, God brother. The white man. Your sons and daughters were given to the so-called white man. And he changed your name. He whipped your foreparents. 
He raped your foremothers. He raped your forefathers. And he changed their names and said, you are from the Thompson Plantation. You are from the Chisholm Plantation. You are from the Baxter Plantation. You are from the Simon Plantation. And now we get together and we don't know who the hell we are. But we all look alike. Look at each other, man. Look at each other. We are the same people. We are the same people with, the, with different last names. We left our name for a curse. God put us into slavery. Read it again. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. God said we will become an astonishment. Now look at us. This is the astonishment, the curse that has happened to us. This is the astonishment, brothers. We got to wake up. We got to wake the hell up. Give me that. We are stuck in the sleep. You are, you're, you're in a deep sleep right now. You're in a deep, deep sleep. And you must come out of that thing. Rom uh, yeah, Romans, Romans, right? 13. You're in a deep sleep. And the only people that can wake you up is men that have an understanding of the Bible. Right. These men out here, they can't wake you up. They want you to come buy a shirt or some damn turkey legs or a damn football, some, some scenes and some shades. They're not trying to wake you up. They are perpetuating and continuing to push a cycle that we have been stuck in for over 400 years. Bring it out. Turn a damn shirt. You're breaking God's high holy day. You need to repent. Read. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. Bring it out. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. God says that knowing the time. Look around you. You can't go nowhere in this country and not possibly be shot down by the police. You can't go nowhere in this country and you're not viewed as a nigga. Bring it up. If you go to China, they got a Chinese word for nigga. If you go to Africa, guess what? Don't make sure people either. They hate your guts. You a nigga. If you go to London, if you go to Brazil, it don't matter where you go at in this world, you are viewed as a nigga. But God says, you ain't no niggas. You are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's who you are. But you forgot that. So God said what? That now it is from the top. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Our people are asleep. Half these people, if not every last one of them out here with their little tents and stuff right now, they're going to be in church tomorrow. Talking about they praising God. You are breaking God's commandments right now. You're in the midst of sin right now. Today is the Lord's Sabbath day. That's what it is. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is the first day of the week. Look on your calendar. You look at it every week when it's time to go to work. The first day of the week, pull up your phone. Pull out your calendar. Tell me what the first day of the week is. What is the first day of the week on your phone? Your calendar tells you it is Sunday. It is Sunday. So God says worship on the seventh day, but our people go on the first day. You're confused as hell. And your pastor is a damn liar. That's what he is. He's a pork chop, sinful, pork chop eating liar. That's what he is. I'm going to tell you straight. Give me Jeremiah chapter 23 real quick. Give me Jeremiah 23 because the reason for this right here is because the pastors and the leaders of this country here in East Over, they don't like no Bible. They don't want to hear Bible. They buy that money. They trying to get that money. You are breaking God's commandments and judgment is coming to your house full force. Unless you repent. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors. God says woe unto your pastors. So if you are sitting on the sideline like many of you I see right now listening, you have listening, I'm talking to you. Black man in East Over, I'm talking to you. Black woman in East Over, I'm talking to you. God is talking to you. Read it again. Woe be unto the pastor. God says woe. Whoa, destruction to you pastors, come on. That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. You have destroyed and scattered the sheep. Look at God's sheep. Look at the sheep of God breaking God's commandments today. Look at them. Yet these grown ass men don't know a thing about God and know how to turn back to God's commandments. Your pastors have scattered God's sheep. Read. Therefore, saith the Lord God of Israel, thus saith, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. God says that you 
two pastors, I guarantee you in that group right there, it's about two pastors. I guarantee you there's a pastor within 10 feet of me right now. You got a booth open. On the Lord's Sabbath day, God says you have scattered the sheep of my flock, and I'm going to visit you. Read it again. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. This is what God is telling you men that are pillars in the community, supposedly, and you pastors that are supposed to be teaching the children of Israel. Read. Against the pastors that feed my people, oh. ye have scattered my flock. You have scattered the flock of God. You got to out here celebrating the damn Mayfest. Can you find Mayfest in the Bible? Bring it up. What about you? Can you find it? No. Hey, brother, where can I find Mayfest in the Bible? Can I find that? Where the hell it come from? It came from man. It came from man. But yet we say we love God. You do not love God. Give me that in John. You do not love God. This is what it means to love God. If we know that this is a man-made day and God says not to celebrate these doctrines of men, then why do we do it? Because we don't love God. This is the love of God. Read. The book of John. Read. The book of John, first John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. The Bible says this right here is the love of God. You love God? You love God. Read this again. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. You love God? You love God? You love God? Now I'm going to see. We're going to see if you love God. Read it again. For this is the love of God. This right here is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we do what? Keep his commandments. God says, you love him if you keep the commandments. Read. Right. And his commandments are not grievous. So these commandments ain't grievous. A lot of us say, we love God. I know God. I know God. God is, uh, you know, he's in my heart. I know God. You do not know God. If you knew God, you would keep the commandments. That's the only way to show that you know God. I'm going to give you a commandment that you can keep right now. Give me numbers. Give me numbers chapter 15. Huh? It ain't seven what? What's a what? Seven commandment. Tell me, you tell me what the seven commandment is. I asked you which one. I asked you which seven commandment. Like, what? I thought you said name one. He thinks it's only seven. No, there's over, there's way more than seven commandments, brother. It's, it's over 600 commandments. What's it? Six? 616. 616. It's over 600. It's over 600. But if you start keeping a few of them, you will be keeping them all before you know it. I'm going to show you something. Give me numbers real quick. This is the one you can fit. You, you, can, you can do this right now. I'm going to show you. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. What are fringes? Y'all know what fringes is? No? You've been to church before though, right? Your pastor ain't never told you what a fringe is. God says, tell the children of Israel to put fringes on their clothes. You see this right here? These are fringes. Look around you. You see that? These are fringes. All of us got fringes on our clothes. People say, what are them funny little things on your clothes? These are the commandments of God. That's what this is. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.